I'm using a wireless microphone and I kind of hit it so I can't find the button. Um, well, my name is Doris Fetalk and I better move over so that this podium doesn't completely obscure my face. <laughs> now, uh, as you've heard, we are connecting with some remote sites today, which I'm really glad to be able to do. And this is part of the fun I think of the Innovative Green Classroom, is that you're able to not only speak to the people here, but also the people really around the country. So, uh, I would like to thank some of the sponsors who made this possible, making a world of difference. Thank you. Uh, and I am really, really glad to be able to have this opportunity, this medium, to speak about a kid's eye view of the classroom. So, you might be wondering, seeing me in my midget-like state, how I got to do this. Well, and I'm hoping that you're not thinking, hmm, they're telling us that the economy is getting better, that the economy isn't shrinking, but it looks like the speakers are. Well, actually, there are quite a variety of tall people here. And what's more, uh, I actually got started in this in, in some very legitimate ways. I do have credentials. At the age of seven, I published my first book. It's called Flying Figures, and you can see it here. And this book includes nine of my short stories, as well as tips for writing. So writing is one of my first loves when it comes to things that I like to do. And I thought, hmm, well, I've written all of these stories. I want to do something with it. So I published my books, and now I have published more than one, so here's Flying Fingers, but I've also published a second book called Dancing Fingers with my older sister Adriana. And she is a ninth grader, so technically high school or else she would probably be doing this speech. Young in the Skies is my third book, and it is a novel. So I really enjoyed writing, but that doesn't quite explain how I got to be presenting at education conferences. Well, from writing, after publishing my books, I thought, hmm, well, I've published books, I've done some of my stories, now I want to do something with my talent. So I started teaching writing workshops to local schools, and that took me to a lot of places. Uh, in the picture that you see up in the corner, that's me actually teaching at Whitney Young High School. That was the first lady's former high school. Teaching has taken me to a lot of places, just like you, including over 350 schools and classrooms, and I connect with these through both video conferencing, as we're doing today, and also in school visits to places as diverse as Dubai, England, Canada, Costa Rica, China, and Vietnam. Actually, just this Tuesday, I visited a local school, Perry Meridian Middle School, which was a very enjoyable experience. And you'll be hearing a little more about that later. I used the Center for Interactive Learning and Collaboration, or CILC, to post some of my programs and then share them with the world. As a result, I do a lot of traveling, and this is a little bit unfortunate because I do try to keep track of my um, carbon footprint, and I know that jetting around the country isn't exactly the best way to do that, but I have traveled to many different places, England, France, Italy, China, Vietnam, Canada, and 20 state, 21 states now, including Indiana. So this is my first time here, and actually I will be going to Ohio and uh, also Florida for some more conferences. Now on to learning. So a fireworks display might not be the conventional image associated with learning, but to me, learning is full of sparks, excitement, and energy. And now, this is all very fine for the 4th of July, but how to accomplish this in a classroom? Well, they do say, know your enemy, and while your students are not your enemies, never think that, or at least I hope not, you can still learn a lot by having a clear picture of a middle schooler. So I presume that you guys all have something to do with middle schoolers. Now, um, you want to know your audience as well. They always tell you that in writing class. And so, firstly, I want to hear what you think. When you hear middle schooler, what do you think? What are some of your impressions? Would anybody like to be brave enough to tell me, when you hear middle schooler, what do you think? Yes? Full of wonder. Full of wonder! Excellent! I love to hear something positive because actually my mom, she asked this question on her Facebook and she said, what words come to mind when you think about middle schoolers? And the first two ones were uh, hormonal, creative, and then also energetic, confused, curious, more intelligent than many things, self-aware, growing, dynamic, searching, joyous, fun, gamey, uh, tween, influx, nomads, moving only forward in a world that belongs to the present but dreaming of the future. So we got a lot of um, interesting things online, so I like that one. And um, unfortunately, we're not using active expression today, but um, we can put in full of wonder. There we go. 
Great. Anything else? Full of wonder. What's another one? Yes, thank you. Curious. Curious. Excellent. Now it's funny. Oh, yes. Telephysis, the Aristotelian concept of not just what is in the now, but the potential of what is to be. Okay, so fill the potential not just of the now, but also what is to be. That's an excellent way of putting it. Um, tell us, T E L O S slash physis, P H Y S I S. Sorry? I'm just spelling it. Tell us, T E L O S and then T E L O S, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. And let's get, yes, one. Oh, <laughs> you were just pointing. I thought you were raising your hand. Yes? Innovative, excellent. And the point of this presentation is an innovative green classroom after all. So innovative, I think, is an excellent word to describe um, not just middle schoolers, but also what goes on in the middle schools. So one thing we know for sure is that today's middle schoolers are a diverse bunch. They wear different clothes and they speak different languages. So we see a lot of differences in middle school at that age. They have many different learning styles which makes skillful differentiation in learning so important. Speaking of important, middle schoolers are at the age where independence is important. So if you've been through middle school, which I'm sure you guys have, then you know that this is an age where probably a lot of kids are thinking, oh, I want to run away from home, and gosh, why did your mom and dad tell me to take out the garbage? I'm my own person. So that is something that can be channeled in more positive ways, I think, in learning. So independence is an important thing. And middle schoolers might want to own a lot of things, from brand new bags to video game consoles and plasma screen TVs. But most importantly, middle schoolers want to own their learning. I think this is something really interesting to think about. Because after all, we middle schoolers are a disenfranchised group. We can't vote, we can't drive, we can't drink. Well, that's not so important. But we don't have a whole lot of control in many areas of life. And owning our learning means that we have decision-making power in an area that will affect us for the rest of our lives in high school, college, and in citizenship. So you might be wondering, how do middle schoolers go about owning their learning? Well, I found that technology can be a really good way to do that. And while we may not have been using a computer from the cradle, we still have a fair amount of prowess using technology, and we're probably enthusiastic about it as well. It's an interesting, engaging tool. And so you have seen the rise of social networking, MySpace, Facebook, and you think, hmm, well, this isn't really an educational purpose. And so as far as the dismay of parents and educators go, uh, a lot of students are using the internet and technology in maybe not so educational ways. And that's where educational networking like ePals comes in. And I think that social networking has risen because today's learners crave interactions with real people, both online and face to face, not just facts and a book. It's what their ancestors have probably been thinking for many, many years. So that brings me to our vision in an innovative green classroom. In an innovative green classroom, I believe the students are engaged through technology and using it in educational ways. So when I'm starting now to write something I, about the word, then I often look up that word. So in this case, it was an innovative green classroom, and I looked up innovative. According to the Card Dictionary, innovative means new and creative, especially in the way